Hello, thanks for attending the talk on Polkadot governance uh, and what changes are, are happening with the governance to upgrade. So I'm Radha, I'm a technical education lead at Web3 Foundation uh, based in Switzerland, and I'll be the face for Polkadot governance today for you. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with like what Polkadot is and, and what it exactly does. It's a layer zero blockchain, uh, meaning Polkadot is, is like the underlying layer for layer one blockchains. So, uh, so these blockchains, so they sort of run in parallel to, to the Polkadot blockchain, so hence they're called parachains. So these parachains could, could run the logic of any layer one blockchain that is out there, like Ethereum, Bitcoin, you name it, you know, they can technically execute what they are doing uh, as a parachain. So, so what Polkadot does is it sort of secures the blocks of those parachains, and it also lets those blockchains talk to each other like seamlessly. So it does interoperability, and it provides security to those blockchains. Along with those features, like you also have you know, additional features, like uh, because these blockchains, which are parachains, have their own logic. Like Polkadot is not going to put any constraints on what it should be. So those are going to be application-specific blockchains. So previously you heard people complaining about gas fees when they're minting a lot of NFTs. So you could actually have you know, a blockchain which doesn't do that, right? So, um, so Polkadot provides uh, the substrate blockchain building framework that lets you build these customizable blockchains and then so this is the focus of our talk, which is like the on-chain governance. So Polkadot has one of the most sophisticated governance systems out there. And I'm sure after this talk, you, you sort of get that insight as well. Uh, and then finally, we have what is called forkless upgrades. So any sort of changes to the network is not going to fork the blockchain. So, so that's my favorite feature. I'm going to talk about that as well. All right, so if you go to Polkadot blockchain, if you just open like Polkadot.js website and look at the governance tab, so there are a few things that are listed out there. So you see democracy, uh, you see the council, treasury, bounties, and technical committee. Okay, so this forms the core you know, governance structure of Polkadot, and it's completely on-chain. So from uh, a governance proposal to its execution, so everything is, is done on-chain. And yeah, so I'm gonna spend with what's, what's out there currently and then explain to you like what's changing in, in this. So the first thing is, you know, Polkadot is a democracy. Uh, I mentioned to you, you know, I, I flew in from Switzerland, so Switzerland has like this direct democracy. I've lived in uh, India and, and, and the US, so both are like big democracies. So if democracy is, is like the pinnacle of human civilization or, or you know, governance structures, then there is a lot, I'm aware of all the challenges that come with it from my own personal experience. So, so what's, what I'm trying to say here is like Polkadot kind of like develops on what uh, innovations have already happened in governance in general. So you have a DOT token holder. So DOT is the native token of, of Polkadot. So that lets you participate in almost all the governance activities out there. So being a direct democracy, Polkadot lets uh, you know, um, a normal DOT to token holder to propose uh, something on-chain, which can become like a referendum. Um, and along with that, you know, because not everybody has so much of time to, to sort of do all this stuff, so you can also elect like a, a council member, you know, to, to do that stuff for you. So I'll tell you like what struck to me a lot in, in Polkadot's governance system. It's the concept of conviction voting. So whenever there is a democracy, it's the majority that always gets the things that it wants, right? So the minorities always have to fight it out for their voice to be heard. So Polkadot is one of the, those blockchains that lets, you know, minority groups have their, their preferences sort of notice. So, so we have a concept called conviction voting. Of course, like uh, in other blockchain systems, the number of tokens you hold are going to define like, you know, how much uh, say you have in, in a certain uh, referendum. But here, 
you know, someone with, let's say, 10 dot with a lot of conviction, if they're willing to, you know, uh, log those dot for a signif significantly longer period of time, can actually have a lot of weight in deciding a certain uh, outcome of a referendum. So, yeah, uh, so th that's with the direct democracy out there. But again, like you need someone to, you know, actively take care of like the governance of the chain. So that's the job of the council. So currently there are like 13 elected council members out there. So all of them have their identities listed. Uh, but again, this sort of causes some level of like centralization and then uh, a lot of like accountability on these, these council members, um, which is what is going to be addressed later in, in, in the latest model. But anyway, so these are the council members who they don't have any extra privileges to, to execute like referenda or something. They can only create referenda uh, which have some privileges. I'm going to talk about this later. Uh, so if I'm, as a dot holder, if I create like a proposal and then it makes it to the referenda queue, so this is what happens. So uh, forget about that equation for a while. So what this is saying is initially when the voter turnout is very low, uh, my proposal requires uh, a higher threshold for of eyes to be passed. As the voter turnout increases, let's say it's 100 percent, then the threshold would be, you know, half. So half of the voter base has to say yes for my proposal to pass through. So that is what is happening in the denominator right there. So turnout and electorate, if they both are like same, then basically it's 50 percent. You know, whoever is on one side or the other is going to decide the fate of the referendum. Now, council has uh, some inertia uh, in their advantage. So what they have is called supermajority reject. So it looks like initially when the voter turnout is low, the council-based referenda can pass when, you know, there's like 34% of yes. So uh, which, again, as you can see, can introduce some, some kind of like uh, centralization talk saying like council members have this unfair advantage over like a general proposal. And then there is treasury. Like uh, I'll tell you about like Polkadot treasury uh, shortly. Uh, so the treasury is funded by the block transaction fee, uh, sorry, block reward fee, transaction fee, slashing if, if it were to occur, treasury gets, gets that money. And then staking inefficiencies, like any sort of uh, switch in terms of like the network staking, the inefficient uh, rewards, they, they go to the treasury. Anyway, so there are over 30 million dot in, in like Polkadot treasury right now. And all of them are being, uh, you know, constantly sought after. Like people put proposals uh, to get those dot to fund events like this, like literally events like these have been funded by Polkadot treasury. It also funded, uh, for instance, the typeface that you see, the font in the slides. So that is sort of funded by, by Polkadot tre Treasury as well. So education initiatives, tooling, anything to do with uh, the infrastructure development of, of the ecosystem. And finally, the, there is another chamber of Polkadot governance, which is technical committee. And again, you can see that it's kind of centralized. Uh, there is a reason for that, because technical committee is supposed to be for the ones who are who have implemented Polkadot protocol. So one is like Web3 Foundation, and the other two are Parity. Now these are elected by the council, um, and they have significantly less power. So all they can do is fast track the referenda. And the reason for this is if there is something that is really, really uh, you know adversarial to the network and that bug has been identified in the referenda, so they have the power to, to sort of fast track uh, a referenda and then put it out for vote. Okay, so in all this, like you have to understand that Polkadot is a meta protocol. So when I say meta protocol, it has the ability to rewrite itself through governance. Uh, and I'm not putting these words out in the air. So this is based on the underlying technology. So Polkadot is powered by three core technologies of that which uh, I'm going to highlight WASM, which is WebAssembly. 
So basically, all the brains of the blockchain, it's called like runtime. It has all the code for execution. That runtime is, is basically a, a WASM blob, and that can be changed uh, through governance. So new rules, new uh, laws. So that gives you a perspective, a new perspective about what code is law means. So times change, you know, uh, things change, and Polkadot is designed to be that blockchain that can evolve with changing times. Okay, so the way code is law uh, is being like redefined by Polkadot is through governance because you know you have legis legislature bodies in 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 actual governments out there. So Polkadot has that similar structure. And the way it works like on the blockchain is uh, the code of Polkadot is part of the blockchain. So let's say this block has the previous code, and then right here, the governance proposal got executed. The next block is going to be created using the new rules. Okay, so the state transition is going to be governed by the new rules. So so far, Polkadot had like 40 plus like runtime upgrades without any hard fork. Okay, so think about it. There's a blockchain that is com continuously like improving itself without like splitting the network, um, and it can keep doing it, you know, through through the governance. It's powerful enough to to execute many upgrades in the future. Uh, all of those have to be voted upon. Uh, there have been 75 referenda, uh, 263 council motions, and a lot of governance activity happening in Polkadot. And some of them were controversial. Uh, there's never a boring day in the governance channels um, that we are part of. Anyway, so there are a few shortcomings, and, and that's the reason we have like governance too. So clearly, the referenda model, the direct democracy model, the way it works is only one referenda can be part of the queue. So, and that referenda is going to take like a, a month for, for being voted on, and then a month for an action. So, so there's a lot of, uh, so now that the ecosystem is growing, and then you know, uh, there's a need for a lot, lot more uh, referenda to be processed. Uh, this is actually bringing the uh, activity on the network down. So, and also there's this decision sniping, where you know the referenda is voted upon, and the last minute you have somebody switch their votes, or, or a whale comes in and then puts a lot of vote against the actual decision, and the network doesn't have enough time to sort of uh, you know respond to that. So, all of these are sort of addressed in and like governance too. So here, again, like we're bringing a lot of innovation onto the blockchain, right? So people haven't attempted all of these in the blockchain systems yet. Um, yeah, so what, what we're doing is we, we're having like multiple referenda of different classes to be executed like parallelly. Uh, and also we are dissolving the council and technical committee, which are clearly, you know, 13, 13 people in, in council and you know three bodies in, in like technical committee. So Polkadot is like getting away with that, uh, replacing that with, with much more like decentralized entities. Um, yeah, and also in doing all this, uh, the target is to balance between safety and agility, which is sort of needed for for a public blockchain because you know uh, you have you always have to assume adversarial environment around you. So the way it looks is anyone can make a proposal in any of these tracks. So each tracks have like certain, uh, you know, dedicated, uh, what do you say? Like you, you have these origins which, which are able to execute that particular uh, upgrade. Okay, so on-chain upgrades which, which require like a very high uh, level of privileges are executed by the root origin and something like giving a tip to, to someone, like 10 dot tip from the treasury to someone, it can have, have like its own track. It need not like stop, uh, you know, the other important referendum happening in the other queues. So this is new and any, anyone can propose anything and anyone can vote on anything. And then the biggest problem with, with any blockchain out there is the voter turnout. Anybody who, who is like trying to implement on-chain governance has to deal with it. Um, and and we have like some uh, you know interesting ways of of using that voter turnout to to decide like what happens to the referendum. 
So for that, we have the conviction voting, so that is preserved. And then we also want to see total number of tokens that, that were participating in, in the voting. And also, there's a way for you to like delegate like uh, your votes. Uh, you know, for each track, you can delegate an uh, individual person. So let's say someone is really good uh, technically, you can say, you know, they can have my voting power for the root origin and, and for the others as well. And finally, like you need someone, the technical expertise of the technical committee. So you're sort of giving that to what we are calling the fellowship. So the fellowship uh, has its own like origin, which is going to fast track like proposals uh, and, and, you know, be very useful when, when there is some bug in the network that needs to be taken care of. Shortly, like, so nothing significantly changed, only the, the total throughput of, of the network in terms of governance. Uh, that is being like improved. Uh, still, the core tenets of Polkadot governance are preserved. You know, the minority groups being able to like express their uh, say in, in like governance and all of that is preserved. You have multiple tracks. Um, you can delegate your voting power to, to someone else to vote on your behalf because you don't have so much of time reviewing so many proposals. And also there is the fellowship, which is sort of taking care of the uh, you know, whitelist uh, origin. And then, yeah. And do I have? So I just want to highlight what, what I have here. So the decision sniping that I talked about earlier so that can be sort of uh, taken care of by, by this mechanism. So what happens is instead of being the vote, uh, the vote being determined at the end of, of the voting period, the, uh, the threshold is, is sort of should be met throughout uh, you know, the voting period. You know? uh, so that's going to end. If anyone is, has followed the parachain auctions on Polkadot, they know like, what auction sniping is and how it is eliminated with that candle auction. So it's kind of similar to that. Uh, it just requires the voting threshold to be met for a period of time. That way, no, someone, if they want to change it at the last moment, you know, uh, that won't work. So, and yeah, so Polkadot has like Kusama network, which is, which is like uh, the experimental platform where the governance is going to be sort of uh, tested before it's rolled out onto Polkadot. And if you have any questions about like governance, uh, I'll be right here uh, to answer. Thank you.